This broadcast is presented by the Flyers Cup and SFBN, who own all broadcast rights. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, including social media, is strictly prohibited. everybody from Ice Line in Westchester, Pennsylvania. This is the 44th Flyers Cup semifinal number two. It features the third seed St. Joseph Prep Hawks against the second seed of Melbourne Prep Friars. I'm Jim Zolke. I'll be bringing you all of the action this evening. Wondering how both teams got here? Well, St. Joe's Prep, the third seed, they beat the sixth seed. It's Silesianum, a five to three in the first round. And Malvern Prep, the number two seed, they beat uh, seven seeded Devon Prep in their uh, first round. That score was eight to nothing. St. Joe's Prep comes in with a record of 15 and six overall. They finished four and four in the APAC. They were tied for second, and guess who they were tied with? That's right, they were tied with Malvern Prep. Malvern Prep also finished four and four in the APAC. They were nine, or they are nine and eight overall. Melbourne's won 10 Triple A Flyers Cup championships in their history. They won three PA State Championships. They are looking for their first PA State Championship since 2021. They're looking for their first Flyers Cup title since 2022. They were the Flyers Cup champs back to back in 2021 and 2022. As for St. Joe's Prep, well, they reached the AAA Flyers Cup championship game once they won that in 2018. They were also the PA state champs in 2018. Oh, I'm sorry, they also were a finalist in the Flyers Cup in 2014. They have been to two finals. The winner here will take on LaSalle Prep, who was a winner in the other semifinal of this evening. St. LaSalle Prep, uh, they were the eight-pack champs. They finished in first place in the standings. They beat St. Joe's in the eight-pack championship game just last week. The winner of this game uh, await, will await as a LaSalle in the championship game. That will be played next week. St. Joe's Prep head coach Dave Giacomin is in his 11th season. He recently won his 100th game 
uh, behind the bench as he's been leading St. Joe's now for just a little over a decade. And St. Joe's, uh, as we said, they're 15 and six overall. They have two overtime wins. They're plus 25 in point differential. For Melvin Prep, as we said, nine and eight overall. They have two OT wins and two OT losses. They are a plus 10 in the point differential. This is the fourth meeting this year between Malvern Prep and St. Joe's Prep. St. Joe's Prep won the first won two of the first three. Melvin Prep was a 4-1 winner, but St. Joe's took an overtime win 3-2, and then they took a shootout win. Those are the three previous meetings. They met just after uh, just after Thanksgiving. And then again at the end of January and uh, just uh, probably about three weeks ago at the end of February. We are just about ready to go here in the first period. St. Joe's versus Malvern. Teams are getting ready for the uh, national anthem and starting lineups. And we'll be back with you right after this. You are listening to the Flyers Cup YouTube channel sponsored by Top Shelf, Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. When you're investing in Malvern Prep, you're investing in over 175 year history of all boys Augustinian education. If you're looking for a well-rounded education that prepares your son, this is the place that will build the foundation to shape you for the future. We're going to inculcate in students a love for lifelong learning and we want a strong moral character. The rest is fun, learning, exploring, and enjoying life. Surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Eldion Padulary in Feasterville, Travos today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Do you know what a blue hen is? It's prideful. Spirited. Blue Hen never backs down from a challenge. And we're there to support them. Delaware Orthopedic Specialist, the official orthopedic partner of University of Delaware Athletics. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Hey Flyers fans, baseball's right around the corner. Your Trenton Thunder begin their jam-packed season with an opening night celebration on Tuesday, June 4th. Come out for our Margaritaville weekend from June 7th through the 9th. Be a part of our heart-healthy night on June 25th and celebrate the 4th of July at the Thunder. Daily specials return with dollar hot dogs and kids eat free Tuesdays, Thirsty Thursdays, Cases Pork Roll Fridays, and fireworks most Thursdays and Saturdays. There's something going on at every Thunder game in 2024. Get your tickets at TrentonThunder.com. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866 Pay easy. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. 
Haddon Planning Group is an independent financial advisory firm serving all Flyers fans across the country. Located in Pennsylvania since 1981, we will offer a free financial plan to all parents of student athletes participating in the Flyers Cup. For more information about our services, go to HaddonPlanning.com or call Jake Reardon at 856-428-5300. And welcome back, everybody, to Ice Line. We are just about set for the Flyers Cup semifinal between number three seed St. Joe's Prep and number two seed Melbourne Prep. Going over the starters for you for St. Joe's Prep. If I can find my sheet here that has the starters on it, St. Joe's Prep. Number four, Braden Collins. Number 29, Tristan Winata. And number 31, or I'm sorry, number, number 53, John Lynch. And number 51, Robert McGinn. That is your D pair, 53 and 51. And number 31, the goalie is Jacob Aranda. Aranda has played in 14 games this year. He's 7, 6, and 1 with a 302 goals against average and an 889 save percentage. We are just underway here. We'll get to uh, Melvin Prep. Their goalie, Matthew Crawford. These two goalies are now facing each other for the fourth time. They were the ones that were in goal for the previous three meetings. And now in the early going here. St. Joe's Prep brings the, tries to clear the zone. They finally do. They get it down into the uh, blue line. Melmer Prep right along the board sends it back up. They've now gained control. And it was Cole Skarbinski in the first line change for Melbourne. He sends it down deep into St. Joe's. And St. Joe's is going to break it out. The puck is played into the corner. Comes up along the half wall. St. Joe's plays it back. Melvin has to retreat. Skarbinski plays it up along the side. And now gaining control is it with it. Heading into the corner. And St. Joe's comes back out of it. They're going to try to flip it out. But that is knocked down by Matt Barbicane. Sent back in. And we're going to have our first icing of the day. Play will come back down into St. Joe's end, or I'm sorry, into Melbourne's end. And a face-off one by Melbourne. They play it across. And now fight for it along the half wall. It's chipped out of the zone. And now Ben Kirsten plays it down deep into Malvern's end. Where Braden Baum plays it along the boards and out. They have a break. Here comes Jeremy Jacobs. He skates in. He misses just along. The, he skated right out in front. He had an excellent opportunity. He's the one that uh, Melvern is looking for. He scored two goals against St. Joe's earlier in a meeting. And that shot knocked down in front. Jacobs slashes at it. The goalie makes a save. Again, with a shot from the point was Braden Baum. Barbicane gets it, it's, chip, it's tipped in front. Goes wide, the save is made. Melvin knocks it back into the corner, but it goes up out of play into the netting. As we said, for Melvin Prep, Jeremy Jacobs is the guy. He's the forward. He led APAC in scoring. He has 17 goals and 15 assists. For 32 points, he also has six power play goals on the year. That faceoff is won by St. Joe's, and Collins plays it all the way back down, but he loses control of it. Malvern gains control in the gray zone. And that, that play is lost. O'Neill broke that one up. Couldn't get through the neutral zone. And now it's back in deep in St. Joe's corner. Gareth McDonald plays it over to Collins. Collins now sends it out all the way up to where Logan Love has to grab it. 
And now it's Jonathan Holt coming in deep and dumping it deep into St. Joe's end. Malvern trying to keep it in. They really couldn't, so they're going to retreat and set up once more. That puck goes off Collins in the neutral zone. He plays it back to O'Neill. O'Neill mishandles it. Still able to get it out of the zone. Brady Doyle plays it off the sideboard back in. St. Joe's quickly gets rid of that, but the puck slides all the way down, and we're going to have our first icing against St. Joe's. 13-28 left in the first period. Still no score between St. Joe's and Malvern. And taking the face off for St. Joe's, Caden Kelly. He's up against uh, Caden Canale. It won by St. Joe's. And now that puck tried to get played out. I think it left the zone. St. Joe's plays it in and puck slides all the way in. And now Lynch is going to pinch. And the puck is played around by Skarbinski. And he gets it out of the zone, sends it down halfway into St. Joe's end. And that's where Aiden Kelly plays it over to Sharafi. And Sharafi plays it down deep in the corner, but Malvern gains control of the puck. There's now a hit in the corner from Malvern. And they play the puck all the way down. Icing's waved off. Down to get it for St. Joe's is Robert McGinn. He plays it up to center ice, intercepted there by Baum. Baum sends it in back into the zone. And it's going to be McGinn again trying to get it out of the zone. Intercepted once more by Baum. And again is McGinn playing it deep in the Melbourne zone. Team seem right now to just be playing the puck back and forth. Played in from the point by Patrick Sweeney. And now here comes Jacobs around the net. He finds his man in front, but it just misses. And now a shot is knocked down in front by Logan Love. Another shot by Jacobs. That puck hits the backboards and comes all, ricochets all the way back around. Baum's going to play it down. Knocked down by St. Joe's, and St. Joe's gets it deep into Melbourne's end. And it's Gargan. He's the big gun for St. Joe's. He played it over to Kirsten, but Kirsten had to just play it into the corner where Melbourne sent it all the way down for another icing. Gargan, Cole Gargan for St. Joe's in 20 games. He has 12 goals and 10 assists, 22 points. He is their leading scorer. Braden Collins, though, also in 21 games, he has eight goals and 13 assists. He is also a weapon for the Hawks. And now in a breakout, here comes St. Joe's. Gargan plays it down into the corner where it's controlled by Malvern's Brady Doyle. Comes back to the point, and O'Neill takes a shot. It's wide, and then in the rebound is shot on by Tristan Winata, but the net comes off its moorings, and we will have a face-off in Melbourne zone. Pretty good opportunity there. O'Neill from the point, hit the backboards and skated, uh, ricocheted out to the side. But they couldn't put in the rebound and the net came off. Face-off, one by Melbourne, sent around the boards by Doyle and now they're out of the zone. Here comes Teague Murray. He gets checked at center ice. The puck goes down. And now here comes a breakout for St. Joe's. They misplay it though. The puck carries down where Doyle will send it back into. 
St. Joe's Zen. Down there for checking Teague Murray. Trying to create something for Melvern. That puck knocked down at the blue line, but Melvern can't maintain possession. And here comes Ely, but he's offsides. Ely in the zone offsides for St. Joe's. That play is whistled dead. 9.51 left in the first period. Still no score here with St. Joe's and Melvern. And we'll have uh, Collins and Jacobs going at it. Face off one by Malvern. Played off the half boards and down by Paxton Hoshik. Into the corner where St. Joe's momentarily had it. And now there's a scrum in the corner. They're looking to ice the puck, but the ref's not going to let them do that. And Collins comes out with it. Plays it off the boards. Up to Winata. Winata now up to uh, Gargan. Gargan plays it down. Melbourne grabs the possession. They clear their zone. And St. Joe's going to regroup in the neutral zone. It's Winata right around the red line. Plays it down and around the boards. And there is a Cole Skarbinski. Carrying the puck out of the zone, sending it down where Aranda has to play it, but the puck is taken away from him. He has to scurry back to the net. Melvern can't take advantage. They couldn't keep the puck in the zone there. Michael Hanna couldn't keep it in. And so now it's St. Joe's belt prep. That puck is intercepted by Baum but then taken away, and here comes Stull. Stull trying to break in. Nice defensive play, way to get back by Melvern. And now Barbicane takes the puck away behind his own net. Just on the other side of the blue line, he flips it in, and they are gonna give it an icing. The play will come all the way back down with 8.09 left in the first. And we will have a face-off to the right of goalie Matthew Crawford. Crawford on the year, it is his 16th game. He is five, seven and three on the year with a two, six, four goals against average. And that face off, one by Canal for Melbourne. Something going on behind the net there. Big hit laid down by Caden Canal. Force Melvern. Melvern gets it out of the zone. It carries all the way down into the corner. Here's Canal again with another hit on Parker Tumulty. Played at the point. The shot is in on goal by Baum, but it's turned aside by Aranda. And now played off the glass and out. Was Noah Stowe. A bomb plays it down. Looking for his teammate, Henry Tesoriero. Tesoriero couldn't quite handle it. And the breakout for St. Joe's is stalled around mid, around mid ice. And that play is whistled down. Here comes the big hit from Canal in the corner. That kind of got Malvern out of their zone. But they weren't able to really get anything going. And we now have a face off to the left of St. Joe's goalie, Jacob Aranda. Collins played it forward, Malvern back to the point. They play it down and in. They're gonna now try the far point where it is corralled by Do Brady Doyle. Jacobs knifes it, keeps it in the zone and we have our first penalty of the game coming up. It's gonna be a penalty to number 51, Robert McGinn for St. Joe's. 
He's going to go off for a boarding. There's the replay. And so now the first power play of the day goes to Malvern. There's 6.34 to go. Oh, that ball, that puck is just tipped wide. Just tipped wide by Caden Canal. It's back at the point. Jacobs now has it. It's sent in, but deflected out in front. Sent back to Jacobs at the point. And he sends it in. There was a screen, but Arande got hold of it. And there will now be a face off to the right of Aranda for Melvern. Still on the power play. They actually have a two man advantage. I missed that first penalty. My apologies. And that shot is saved and rebound is saved. Two big saves by Aranda. Back out to Jacobs. Jacobs plays it over. And now it goes back. Jacobs one times it, but it hits the defender in front, Kelly. And it goes up into the netting. 5.55 to go. No score, but there's still 51 seconds left on a penalty to, to St. Joe's. And then there's a minute nine left on the last penny, penalty, which was to Robert McGinn. Looks like it's Frank Ely that's in the, in the box for St. Joe's. And that shot by Jacobs right along the ice almost got through, but her, I mean, it did get through, but Arande was right there. And now it's Doyle with a shot that's gloved down. I don't know how Arande saw that, but he did glove that shot by Brady Doyle. Real good opportunity for Melvern Prep. They've got the pressure on here, enjoying the five on three for another 27 seconds. They win Doyle over to Jacobs. Jacobs controls back to Doyle. Doyle into the corner. Looking for Jacobs, but the pass was a little off. Jacobs is now behind the uh, cage. It's sent out and a save. Shot by Teague. Murray was saved. Doyle didn't get much on the rebound. And now they send it across. They had that set up nicely, but... Uh, Melbourne just wasn't quite there. 54 takes a shot. That's Teague Murray. It was just wide. And now it goes back to Jacobs at the point. He shoots and scores. Melbourne is on the board first. Jeremy Jacobs. That is Jacobs' 18th goal of the season. And it puts Melbourne in front. The pass comes right over. He steps into the high slot, and I think it went off somebody, and Aranda, it changed direction on Aranda, and he just couldn't quite get it. So you have a goal from Malvern's Jeremy Jacobs at 449 that puts Malvern up one to nothing. It was a power play goal, too. That was his seventh power play goal of the year. And now it's St. Joe's in Melbourne Preps end. They're looking for an equalizer now in the last four minutes of this period. Cole, I'm sorry, that was not Cole. Uh, that was Caden Canale in the corner for uh, Malvern. Played now down around O'Neill sends it in. Nice tip by Winata, but it goes high and wide over the crossbar. There it almost was. A shot from the point is knocked down by Malvern. It was Gareth McDonald, but here comes St. Joe's right back with it. Now in the slot is Stull, but Stull couldn't, couldn't quite corral it. O'Neill pokes it back into the corner. Malvern's gonna have to regroup. St. Joe's will go for a change. And now here comes Melvern out of its zone. Tesoriero sends it down in deep. 
Andrew Starks there, his teammate. But St. Joe's finally takes control of it and sends it back out. Here comes McGinn. He's trying to get it over the blue line. There's Melvin, and here we might have a little bit of a break. A shot and a goal! James Young, the fourth, gives Melvin Prep a two to nothing lead. A turnover in the neutral zone turned into a breakaway for Young, and he buried it short side. There it goes as St. Joe's got caught flat footed. He came in just looked the left handed wrister just made, I'm sorry, it was not short side, it was the uh, far post. He just put it inside the far post. And it is now two to nothing, Malvern. And they give Logan Love the assist on that one. So that was Young from Love for Malvern Prep at 313, or with 313 left in the first. Face off won by Malvern. Malvern gives it a ride down. It won't quite make the red line, so icing is waved off. There's now a fight along the far boards, chipped up to the point. And that's where Love tries to send it in. And now here comes Shafari on a break for St. Joe's, but he can't quite finish the breakaway. Back checking on that was Braden Baum. Jeremy Jacobs trying to get by a hip check on the boards. Lost the puck, but Malvern got it right back. And now a shot in on goal is saved. That was Love from the far point. And it just skips by Doyle. Doyle sends it over to Love. Love was looking for Jacobs, but he couldn't connect on the pass. And St. Joe's now has it. Their defenseman, Sweeney, falls down. He just has to play it down into the zone where it'll be touched by Crawford. And that puck played off the board by Doyle. Baum touches it up. They try to lift it out. It's knocked down by Lynch. Sent up to Collins, but it's off his skate. He can't control it. In behind the net. St. Joe's trying to gain control. Malvern keeps it in. A uh, shot by Brady Doyle was sent in. And now a shot right there by Skarbinski. Right at the faceoff circle in the low slot was saved. And Brady Doyle then took a shot from the near point. That was gloved down by Aranda. And we have 120 left in the first period. Malvern up two to nothing. Pair of goals very close to part. First one, a power play goal. And that shot in is saved by Aranda and steered aside. That was Caden Canal. Here comes St. Joe's. It'll be a two on one if they can hurry. Collins takes a shot and Crawford's right there for the save. No rebound. We'll get a face off to the right of Matthew Crawford, who's been perfect so far in goal. As we said, Melbourne up two to nothing. They had a goal with four minutes and 47 seconds left in the first. That was the power play marker by Jeremy Jacobs. And then it was, it was James Young. A minute and 24 seconds later, made it two to nothing. That shot from the point by McGinn is right on target. Crawford's there with the save. We will go for a redo in the right face-off circle. 53.9 seconds left in the first period. Malvern up two to nothing. The winner will get LaSalle prep next week in the Flyers Cup Championship. And that face off, one by Doyle. Knocked off the puck is Jacobs, but Skarbinski's right there. He clears the zone at least and gets it down deep into St. Joe's end. 34 seconds left. 
That puck played up, intercepted by Skarbinski, but he's checked off there by Tumulty. And now here's short, short looking for his teammate Lynch. Couldn't connect on it. They pinch on the boards and keep it in. And now with 14 seconds left, Malvern clears the zone and St. Joe's has to exit the zone. Five, last five seconds of the first period. That should just about do it. Skarbinski won't let one roll. And at the end of one, we've got Melbourne two, St. Joe's nothing. You are listening to the Flyers Cup YouTube channel sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. We'll be back after this. When you're investing in Malvern Prep, you're investing in over 175 year history of all boys Augustinian education. If you're looking for a well-rounded education that prepares your son, this is the place that will build the foundation to shape you for the future. We're going to inculcate in students a love for lifelong learning and we want a strong moral character. The rest is fun, learning, exploring, and enjoying life. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. Haddon Planning Group is an independent financial advisory firm serving all Flyers fans across the country. Located in Pennsylvania since 1981, we will offer a free financial plan to all parents of student-athletes participating in the Flyers Cup. For more information about our services, go to HaddonPlanning.com or call Jake Reardon at 856-428-5300. And we are back with the second period here from Ice Line in Westchester, Pennsylvania. It's the second semifinal of the 44th edition of the Flyers Cup. Melvern leads St. Joe's by a score of two to nothing. It was Jeremy Jacobs with his 18th of the year. And then a minute and 20 later, it was James Young scoring his third goal of the season. And Malvern dumps the puck in low to start this second period. There's a fight in the corner for it. It pops out. Malvern now has it. He circles the back of the net. That's Jonathan Holt. He tried to flip one on goal. Aranda was there. Skarbinski knocked down by Sharafi. It's picked up by... Kelly for St. Joe's. He plays it out of the zone, and in the neutral zone, it's uh, number 11, Frank Ely for St. Joe's, who took a shot, a nice blocker save by Crawford. Melvern can't clear the zone, is back to the point. Shane O'Neill's two shots are knocked down from the point. He pinches the boards and keeps it in, and now takes a shot that's saved by Crawford and steered into the corner. Ely sends it in high, and that was O'Neill still over on the far point. Couldn't quite keep it in. It'll be corralled by Gareth McDonald. He'll play it around the boards and down. Malvern regroups behind their net. Played high, almost off the netting. Just caught the top of the glass, and it's St. Joe's in their own end. Gargan and Lynch playing with it, trying to break out of the zone. Gargan has it stolen right at the red line, and now here comes Melbourne. Caden Canale takes a shot that's saved by Aranda, and now it's played up, and we're here on a break. Shot saved. Tristan Winata denied by Matthew Crawford, and the puck goes up off the, off the netting. We'll have a face-off. Beautiful opportunity for St. Joe's to try to cut that deficit in half. Went out on, in on a breakaway, and Crawford was equal to the task. Knocking the puck up and into the 
netting. Face off now in Malvern's zone. Malvern's able to clear the zone. And Lynch will come all the way back and grab it behind his net. They'll start their break out from there. He sends it up, can't quite connect with Ely. The puck slides down and it'll be an icing. Fourteen forty-two left in the second period. Malvern leading two to nothing. They have a fifteen to seven advantage in shots. That face-off won by Malvern. Now it's in the slot. The loose puck is being knocked around. It was Henry Tesario who had probably the best shot at it, but I don't even think it got on goal. Now here's Tesario again. High slot. Shots high over the net. Now they try to play it and behind the boards, pinching on the far side is Braden Baum. He now plays it to Cesario and Arand is right there for a save on the low shot. Played by Baum to Jacobs. Jacobs across the ice to Baum. And behind the net and clearing is Lynch. He's sending it all the way down for icing. And St. Joe's will go for a change. Two to nothing. Goal scores are Jacobs and Young for Malvern Prep. About a minute and 24 part in the first period. First one was a power play goal by Jacobs. Now a shot is knocked down and sent behind the net. Young looking for his second of the day was denied. Nice big hit right in the corner. Delivered by Jonathan Holt. He's going to deliver another one. Nope, he pulled up, let his teammate take the shot. Andrew Stark had the check. That kind of woke up the crowd here at Ice Line. And Carson has it. He's going to send it in deep. It's going to be picked up by Holt. Holt off the half board and down for icing. The puck will come all the way back into Malvern's zone. And here we take another look at Jonathan Holtz hit in the corner. Nice clean check, open ice hit. Sends Patrick Sweeney down. And now it's Malvern. Oh, I thought maybe they would win that face off. But it seems to be St. Joe's prep controlling. They can't really do much with it. Skarbinski for Mal Malvern. Behind the net. And it's now up to Aiden Kelly. But St. Joe's intercepts, sends it down. They go for a change. And trying to get out of the zone was Melvin. They couldn't. Brady Doyle on the blue line starts a break now. And they are going to whistle this down for a high stick. Puck was played with a high stick. That faceoff will come back out of the zone. We will go back down to the other end. 12-25 to play in the second period. Malvern leading 2-0. Jacobs against Collins. And that puck is played out of play. We will have another faceoff right there to the right of Matthew Crawford. And we'll go Jacobs Winata this time. One by Winata. He plays and uh, St. Joe's plays it back in. That play is whistled down. And we are going to get a face-off outside the zone. On the near side, it's going to be Collins and Jacobs again. 
Collins wins this one. Plays it over to Lynch. Lynch sends it into the far corner. Corralled by Skarbinski. St. Joe's picks it up. It's now Collins behind the net. Skates around, backhand back to Lynch. Lynch a one-timer, but didn't get much on it. And now it's played out, but Lynch knocks it down. The puck is hit in front. And it was Winata trying to get that one on goal. He just couldn't. Goes back to Gargan. Over to, over to McGinn. McGinn tried to get it out of the zone and hit a Malvern player. And now Winata is stood up by Skarvinsky at the top of the circle. And we have another penalty coming up. It'll be the first penalty to Malvern. And it is Henry Tesoriero. He'll go off at 11.31 of the first, or of the second. He's off for boarding. The penalty comes down into Melvern zone. And we have a power play. The first power play for St. Joe's prep. We'll see what they can do with the man advantage. They tried to get it into the high slot area, but Caden Kelly couldn't uh, knock it down. It went all the way back into St. Joe's uh, zone. And Patrick Sweeney's going to bring it out. Send it up to Caden Kelly. Kelly into the corner. Sweeney now in the far point. Down to Shafari. Over to McDonald. McDonald up to the point where Kirsten is. He tries to pinch and keep it in, but he can't. And now here's an opportunity for Malvern. He makes a nice move in the corner and takes a shot that's just wide. That's Aiden Kelly for Malvern. He took a shot that was just wide. And now here comes Kirsten. Kirsten over the center line now into the zone. Holds up. There's another 58 seconds on the power play for St. Joe's. And from the point, Sweeney it hit somebody. I don't think Crawford saw that, but it still went wide. O'Neal now behind the net. Trying to play it out in front to his forward. And it was Adam Shafari. I wonder if they're going to give a penalty on this. It looked like they were holding the stick. Nope, no penalty coming. And I don't really know. I don't have the best angle <laughs> from where I'm standing up here in the, in the stands in the press box. Not the best angle. But we will have Jacobs and Collins on the faceoff to the left of Crawford. Kind of controlled by St. Joe's. They hold the zone anyways. And now pinching in is John Lynch. Went out of behind the net, trying to kick it along, get it out to the point. That's played back in by McGinn. O'Neal looking for Winata in the slot. McGinn, that puck's knocked down. Looked like Jacobs is on a break. He corrals it. Here he comes in, and it's a nice defensive play by St. Joe's. John Lynch just knifed that away from Jacobs. Jacobs comes back around and takes a shot. From the outside, that is gloved by Aranda. And with 9.26 left in the second period, Malvern will force a face off to the right of Aranda, the goalkeeper for St. Joe's Prep. It's two to nothing. Friars leading the Hawks. And we'll go with Collins and Jacobs again. These two seem to be facing off quite a bit this, uh, this evening. The referees explaining something to uh, Dave Jockman for St. Joe's Prep, the head coach. I don't think he liked the, dis the uh, description, but nevertheless, here we are. Out of the zone is St. Joe's. It's McGinn picking it up, sends it to Collins. Collins has Winata at the blue line. He touches it. It's onside. 
And Collins' shot in on Crawford is easily scooped up. 9.05 left of the second. 2 nothing Malvern. Shots in Malvern's favor at 19 to 12. And we'll now have Stull go up against Jacobs. And it was Short who was uh, knocked down in the corner there by Logan Love. And now here comes Malvern out of the zone. Oh, a nice hit laid. Now I think they're gonna get a penalty. That is gonna be a penalty coming up here on Malvern's number 37, Caden Canal. Canal's going to plead his case to the linesman to no avail. It's going to be an elbowing on Canal at 8.45 of the second. Here he gets kind of mixed up, and Canal comes in right at the end. Bam! Lays down the elbow. He thought it was a good check, but he got that elbow up for sure. He's off for elbowing at 8.45, and St. Joe's Prep will go on their second power play of the day. They're 0 for 1 in the game. St. Joe's Prep, 1 for 2. Prep. Melbourne sends it all the way down. I guess I shouldn't really say Prep, as they're both Prep schools. And Kerson from behind his net will start it out. He gets it up to Kelly. Oh, and the, the puck is played back to the point, but Kirsten wasn't at the point. So Kirsten had to come back to the neutral zone, played across to Sweeney, and now they'll try the other side, Sweeney and McDonald. Here comes Kelly. He gains control of it, loses it, but Shafari's right there. Sweeney back over to Kirsten. Kirsten at the point, flicks in a wrister. It's knocked down by Crawford. He couldn't corral it, but the... Rebound is kicked away, and Malvern sends it out of play. 7.53 left in the second, 109 left on the penalty to Caden Canal. And we have a face off just outside of Malvern's zone on the far side. It's Collins and Jacobs again. One by St. Joe's Prep, I guess. Though the puck went all the way down into their zone. It's going to be Lynch starting the breakout. Winata, they got 56 seconds left on this power play. Winata, wrist shot that goes just wide. It was a save by, it was actually a save by Crawford. Lynch from the point plays it in. O'Neal behind the net. Sends it out into the slot. Nobody there, but it goes all the way back to the point. And there's... There's McGinn with a shot. And Crawford jumps on the loose puck. 35 seconds to go in the power play. There'll be a faceoff to Crawford's right. 7.19 left in the second. It is now Winata against Aiden Kelly in the faceoff. He kicks it back to Collins. Collins takes a shot that just goes over the net. Played back to the point. Lynch over to Winata. Winata to the point. And Collins tries a backhand that's knocked down by Crawford and sent wide. Oh, they can't meet up in the slot area. Lynch in there. That was deflected by O'Neill, but Crawford was right there and gobbled up the loose puck. 12 seconds to go on this power play by St. Joe's. They've had about four shots on goal in this power play. It's been a pretty good power play for St. Joe's. They just haven't been able to get one past Crawford. And now Collins wins it, and that one's high. Knocked down by Crawford's shoulder. Winata tried to go to the near side corner. And here comes Malvern Prep. It tries the backhand. It can't quite. Tessario. Went to the backhand, it just went wide. Malvern puts on some more pressure. Back to the point where Brady Doyle's shot goes wide. 
Skarbinski is gonna pinch. St. Joe's plays it off the half board. Tessario had it, sends it into the far corner. Skarbinski took a swing at it, didn't, didn't connect. Looking for Collins. Collins a little frustrated that the pass just didn't quite get to him. It's now icing. We'll come all the way back down into St. Joe's end. The penalty is over. There's 6-11 left in this second period. Malvern defending a two-goal lead. Two goals in the first period, a minute 24 apart. And that face-off won by St. Joe's. They try to play back around the boards. It's now chipped out of the zone by Sharafi. Sharafi in the slot, saved by Crawford, and we got a penalty coming up. It's gonna be a cross check. Let's see who they got. They've got number 44, Logan Love for Malvern, and it will be the third power play of the period, also the third power play of the game for St. Joe's. Love off for cross checking with 552 left. Face off is one. Oh, but they can't control it. And now Kirsten loses it. And then on a breakaway is Jacobs. Jacobs shot is wide. That is the guy you don't want going in on a breakaway. Malvern plays it down and around the boards. Aranda corrals it for St. Joe's. They'll start the breakout. Oh, that pass is just wide. And Sweeney takes it at the blue line. He comes over the opposite blue line, sends it in on goal. I think he was hoping McDonald would get there. Just a little too early, and Crawford scoops up the pass. 1.24 left in the penalty, 5.16 left in the period. We are going to have a Winata against Gargan. Or I'm sorry, not Gargan. That shot from the point is knocked down. Lynch took a shot from the point. That was knocked down. It was Caden Canal on that faceoff. I was looking at the wrong roster. My apologies. And Lynch sends it up to Winata. Winata is going to come over the blue line into the zone. And he's going to hold up and send it back to Lynch at the point. Lynch over to Winata. Winata into the slot where O'Neill just tipped it wide. And Lynch can't get back to the point and stop that from going all the way back down as Melvin tries to kill the last 44 seconds of this power play. It's the third power play of the period for St. Joe's. Winata over the blue line. He's trying to carry it in alone. He gets checked off the puck. McGinn sends it into the slot where it gets tipped. And then Malvern is going to clear the garbage in front of Matthew Crawford. I don't know how Crawford saw that, but he did. And we'll have a faceoff coming up to the left of Matthew Crawford. 26 seconds left on the power play to St. Joe's. 4.18 left in the second period. Tumulty and Jacobs. One back, Jacobs wins it back and clears it up. Trying to knife it forward was Jacobs, he couldn't. Malvern though. Collects the puck in the neutral zone, sends it in. They've got 10 seconds left. Maybe time for another rush by St. Joe's, but they don't look like they're in any kind of a hurry to get it up the ice. They will let the penalty expire. 3.53 to go in the second. Here comes Stull over the blue line. His slap shot is tipped up into the netting.
And it'll be a face-off in Malvern zone with 3.48 to go in the second. St. Joe's trying to get some offense going here. Tumulty tries to keep it in the zone. Can't. Stall takes the loose puck at the red line. Keeps the pressure on for St. Joe's. Tumulty sends it in where it was picked up by Barbicane. Barbicane plays it over to Tessorio. Now kind of a conversation going there between uh, Tumulty and Barbicane. That's kind of why I didn't really say anything. I was watching that to uh, see if something was going to happen there. Malvern wins it. Tesoriero sends it into the zone. Played there by Caden Kelly. Kelly comes out of it. Being back checked by Jacobs. And Tesoriero and sends, oh, he can't quite get it to Jacobs. It goes into the corner. Jacobs and Sweeney now fighting for it. Sweeney will come up with it. Send it up to Shafari. Shafari on to Ely. Ely kind of overskated it, waited for it to catch up, and then took a shot that was off the leg of Crawford. Sweeney at the point, sends it back in behind the net. Kelly plays it back to Sweeney. Sweeney, it hits off a Malvern player and goes into the far corner. They'll play it back to Kirsten at the point. Kirsten looking for Ely on the far post. Couldn't hook up with him. He had an open net if he could have. And here comes Malvern right back at it. Ely bounces. Canal off the puck. And at the top of the zone, nice little move there from Doyle. Doyle's shot is saved by Arande. Arande, or Doyle now sends it back in. And a shot by Teague Murray is off the netting. There's 149 left in the second period. Melbourne leads two to nothing. St. Joe's though, because they had three power plays, are now leading in shots, 24 to 22. They've actually come pretty far back from being out shot in this game, but it was because they had three power plays this period. They just couldn't connect on any of the three. And it's remained a two nothing lead for Melbourne. Now they can't clear the zone. Intercepted by Jacobs. His wrister just over the crossbar. Held in the zone by Skarbinski. It's now Jacobs. Jacobs is going to send it out to the point where Skarbinski takes a shot on Aranda. Aranda saves it. Another shot by Skarbinski is turned away by Aranda. And a lot of pressure being applied here by Malvern. Jacobs. Tried to find his teammate, but he was knocked down. Teague Murray was knocked down. So the puck got out of the zone. And now one minute to go in the second. McDonald sends it down into the zone. It's going to be icing and come right back into St. Joe's Preps end. And Winata and Jacobs. No, they're not going to let Jacobs take this one. This one's going to be Paxton Hoyshik. Hoyshik wins it. They get it back to Skabinski at the point. It's knocked it down in front, sent into the corner. And there's Tosoriero. He couldn't quite find Jacobs. Is back to the point where Malvern has it. A little flick in by Doyle is high over the crossbar. Jacobs is icing it along the boards, trying to waste the last 28 seconds here. Tesoriero takes a backhand shot that's knocked down by Aranda. It sounded like it hit his face mask, and then he just jumped on it. With 23 seconds to go in the second quarter, 
or a second period. Malvern getting the right people on. Working the matchups, they win the faceoff. It's played at the point. Doyle through a screen. Aranda has it. Doyle gives or Holt gives a little shove to Shafari for St. Joe's. And this faceoff also won by Malvern. Uh, Ten seconds left. They got to hurry. They try to stuff it in from behind the net. Doesn't go. St. Joe's collects it in the slot, sends it down, and there's a hit right at the end of the second period that has St. Joe's preps coaches. They're looking for a hit to the head. I don't know if they're going to get it, but it's Caden Kelly who gets up, giving an earful to the referee. I think they're looking for a check to the head. And now Dave Jackman wants to know what's going on. He's come onto the ice. We'll take another look at that. Oh, he had his head down. I could see where that could have been called. He had his head down. Both teams exit the ice, it looks like, from the same spot. So they had to wait. St. Joe's prep went off. Now Malvern prep will go off. They will uh, resurface the ice here in between the second and third period. That replay looked like it may have been a check to the head. Looked like he got his, elbow, he got his shoulder up there. This was a nasty hit. This could really have ended badly for uh, St. Joe's prep. Malvern's Caden Canal got his shoulder up. But nevertheless, we've played two and it's Malvern two, a St. Joe's zero. We will be back after this. You're watching the Flyers Cup on the YouTube channel presented by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. Blue Stein, Michael and Company, certified public accountants, believe that your bottom line is as important to them as it is to you. Why? Because they care about the things that you care about. Whereas most accountants can take your numbers and put them on financial statements and tax returns, Blue Stein and Michael work with you through the year to help you solve problems by providing sound professional advice. They enable you to make key business decisions and they are with you throughout the entire year, not just tax time. Blue Stein and Michael are not just hired hands. They are part of your team and they provide professional service when you need it most. Blue Stein and Michael specialize in accounting, tax and consulting services for small businesses, primarily for the construction industry. If you're looking for yes men, hire someone else. But if you want sound advice from service oriented CPAs, then you'll want to call Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. That's Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. When you're investing in Malvern Prep, you're investing in over 175 year history of all boys Augustinian education. If you're looking for a well-rounded education that prepares your son, this is the place that will build the foundation to shape you for the future. We're going to inculcate in students a love for lifelong learning and we want a strong moral character. The rest is fun, learning, exploring, and enjoying life. Surprisingly great rates? Contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Eldion Padulary in Feasterville, Travos today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Do you know what a blue hen is? It's prideful. Spirited. Fiery. A blue hen never backs down from a challenge. And we're there to support them. Delaware Orthopedic Specialist, the official orthopedic partner of University of Delaware Athletics. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Hey Flyers fans, baseball's right around the corner. Your Trenton Thunder begin their jam-packed season with an opening night celebration on Tuesday, June 4th. Come out for our Margaritaville weekend from June 7th through the 9th. Be a part of our heart-healthy night on June 25th and celebrate the 4th of July at the Thunder. Daily specials return with dollar hot dogs and kids eat free Tuesdays, Thirsty Thursdays, Cases Pork Roll Fridays, and fireworks most Thursdays and Saturdays. There's something going on at every Thunder game in 2024. Get your tickets at TrentonThunder.com. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866 Paisy. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. Haddon Planning Group is an independent financial advisory firm serving all Flyers fans across the country. Located in Pennsylvania since 1981, we will offer a free financial plan to all parents of student-athletes participating in the Flyers Cup. For more information about our services, go to HaddonPlanning.com or call Jake Reardon at 856-428-5300. Hey fans, the Sports Fan Base Network is offering player shoutouts on every Flyers Cup game live stream. Give your favorite player their 15 seconds of fame. Just send $25 via Venmo or Cash App to the SFBN. Then you send an email to the SFBN at gmail.com with the name and team of your player, a high resolution photo, and a one to two line script for the SFBN commentators to read. Once the payment and email is completed, SFBN will reply to confirm receipt and you will see your player shout-out at least once per game played. So send out a player shout-out for every Flyers Cup broadcast here on the Sports Fan Base Network. This broadcast is presented by the Flyers Cup and SFBN, who own all broadcast rights. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, including social media, is strictly prohibited.
Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. For surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Eldion Pagulary in Feasterville, Trevose today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Do you know what a blue hen is? It's prideful. Spirited. Blue Hen never backs down from a challenge. And we're there to support them. Delaware Orthopedic Specialist, the official orthopedic partner of University of Delaware Athletics. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. And welcome back for the third period. 17 minutes left in this one. As Europe would say, it is the final countdown for St. Joe's Prep. Malvern leads two to nothing. As we head into the third, it was Jeremy Jacobs with his 18th goal of the season that made it one nothing Malvern. And then James Young, a minute and 24 seconds later, his third of the season made it two to nothing. And that's all of the scoring. St. Joe's Prep had three power play opportunities in the second period, did not score on any of them. And they find themselves trailing 2-0 here in the third. The beginning of the third and the puck is sent down all the way to Aranda, he plays it. Lynch picks it up, sends it. Sends it over to Tyler DiGirolamo, Lynch. Hits it off the half board and it slides all the way down and it'll be an icing. As Gargan almost was an icing himself as he went sliding down the ice. We've played 36 seconds of this third period. Malvern, as they might say, the, uh, the most precarious of leads in hockey, a two goal lead. You think you're up by a lot and then the other team scores and all of a sudden they have the momentum. And here we go, right down the far boards, Frankie Ely knocked off by Gar uh, Skarbinski. Winata tried to play it out into the slot, it was stolen. And now Jeremy Jacobs trying to get free but Kerrison checked him at the blue line, knocked him off the puck. They are now in the far corner digging for it. And out with it is Collins for uh, St. Joe's Prep. Knocked down at the blue line. Frankie Ely trying to corral it. It's now Collins and Winata on the near board. Melbourne flips it down deep into St. Joe's end. You're going to see a lot of that here in the third as they're defending that two-goal lead. And back out with it is Sweeney, and he draws a penalty. Looks like it's going to be a hold. I think they're going to send... Jonathan Holt off with a hold here. It, nope, it is not. It is uh, number 22, Andrew Stark, who gets the holding penalty at 15-17 of the third. 
Stark off for holding the fourth power play opportunity for uh, St. Joe's Prep. And play resumes. Holt knocks it off the half board down into St. Joe's Prep's end. Along the near side, Skarbinski has it kicked out far to O'Neill. O'Neill plays it back to Lynch. Lynch fell down. McGinn across to Lynch again. Stolen by Jacobs. Here comes Jacobs with a wrister, and Aranda comes up with the save. And it's now played. I think they tried to play it back to the point, but there was nobody there. Jacobs tried to play it back. And now that shot just wide. May have caught a piece of Aranda on the way in. And 110 now left in the penalty to Andrew Stark. 1427 left in the game. Face off just outside the blue line of St. Joe's. They win it. Back to Patrick Sweeney. Sweeney picks it up, sends it. Up to Gargan, Gargan to Kelly. Kelly leaves it for Gargan. Gargan skates in along the half board back to the point and Sweeney. Gargan to Sweeney. Sweeney takes a little wrister, it's knocked down in front. I think it hit Tumulty who is in the slot area. And Malvern sends it all the way down. Aranda scoops it, sends it up to Sweeney. Sweeney over to Gargan. Gargan now being harassed by Caden Canal. Gargan over the blue line, play is onside. He's along the boards, up to Kirsten on the point. Point over to Gargan. Gargan with a slap shot, a one-timer. That hits Doyle. The Doyle knocks it down, gets it out of the zone. 16 seconds left in the power play. Sweeney's going to try the far side. Sends it to Kirsten in the middle. Back to Sweeney. Sweeney's going to dump it in. That'll just about do it for the penalty. 13-19 left, the penalty's over. Jacobs gets by Kirsten, he comes down the near side, boards two on one, he takes the shot and it's saved. A little extracurricular there. Aranda didn't like that Jacobs had his stick out. Nevertheless, he made the save as Melvern two, St. Joe's zero, 13-11 left in this game. Shots in favor of Malvern, 30 to 25. And here goes Stull against Jacobs. Jacobs wins it back to the point. And it's slapped in by Braden Baum. That slides out in front dangerously, but St. Joe scoops up the loose puck. And now in the neutral zone, it's Tessiero who sends it up to Jacobs. Jacobs gets around the hip check, but he loses the puck. It's knocked down. And I think they're gonna whistle that it was outside the zone. So we got a face off just outside of St. Joe's zone. Stull against Jacobs. 12.39 left. And Tessiero, he can't get by Lynch. Lynch studs, stands him up. And here comes the breakout. Bobby McGinn sends it down into the corner for Ely. And that was Thomas Ely. He loses the puck there. Matthew Barbicane in the corner plays it. Oh, and it's stolen by Stull, but Stull can't quite get a handle on it in the slot area. Hit check by e Thomas Ely is missed. Malvern's able to clear the zone. They send it down where Aranda has to play it. He gives it out to Lynch. Lynch puts it back behind the net to Stull. And now the puck is lost by Stull in the high slot, but it does come out of the zone where Doyle for Melvin Prep has to play it back in. Lynch picks it up, plays it over to McGinn. 
McGinn up to Winata. Winata up to Thomas Ely, but the puck is taken away there. And now Malvern's going to bring it right back. Over the zone is Holt. Frankie Ely came over the boards for St. Joe's, briefly had it. But it's now going to be Brady Doyle trying to get out of the Melbourne zone with it. Melbourne just has to dump it down in. Ely with it to Winata. Winata up, trying to weave his way around. He gets a shot off on Crawford, and it's saved. A rebound by Collins was saved. And it's going to be Jonathan Holt sending it all the way down to Aranda. O'Neal is going to play it up. Oh, but it was blocked. It was knocked down, and it stays in the zone. A uh, dangerous opportunity right there by number 54, Teague Murray. Aranda was up to the task. Went out on the far board. Melvin can't quite corral it. It goes down into their zone. Nobody there really for St. Joe's. And now we've got a player down, number 17 for Malvern. Uh, Matthew Barbicane goes down on the ice. Play is whistled down. I'm going to have to see what happens here. He got sandwiched there by two St. Joe's players. He's slow to get up. The trainer comes out, talks to him. I think he'll be okay. And with 10.21 to go, Malvern still clinging to a 2 nothing lead. Matthew Barbicane makes his way to the bench. And the faceoff. Controlled by St. Joe's. Now down in the far corner. It's played along by Murray. Hit on the boards. Malvern tries to keep the zone. Can't. Shafari up to Gargan. Gargan's going to try to bring the zone himself. Play is on sides. Referee says it's on side. Gargan gets bounced off the puck by Braden Baum. Kirsten up at the point. A wrist shot right in on goal. And Crawford's got it. And now we got some pushing and shoving. But Crawford's got the puck. Temper starting to flare here with 9.42 to go. We're going to have ourselves an interesting 9 minutes and 42 seconds. Stull and Jacobs on the faceoff. Jacobs wins it, tries to get it up to Tessario. It's played back to Skarbinski for Malvern. He gets checked along the boards, but Jacobs is there to pick up the loose puck. And now he's going to skate it out. He gets it all the way down to the far boards. Tessiero and McGinn are back there. The puck's played all the way around the boards. Skarbinski takes a slap shot. That goes and plays itself around the boards. Picked up by St. Joe's Prep. And now here comes Lynch with a wrister that's caught by Crawford. I think that one was going wide anyways. But a nice glove save by Crawford nonetheless. 9.03 to go in the game. Malvern to St. Joe's zero. We are going to have a face off just to the left of Matthew Crawford, who has been spectacular. He's seen 27 shots today. He's turned them all aside. That puck can't be kept at the blue line. Lynch kind of lost it for St. Joe's. It's now picked up by Malvern. Brady Doyle playing it up to James Young. James Young, one of the goal scorers for Malvern in today's game. He had the second one. Lynch behind the net for St. Joe's. 
Frankie Ely over to Stahl. Stahl looking up, up ice for Carter Short. Couldn't quite match up with him. That puck is sent all the way down and it's going to be an icing on Malvern. So with 8.23 to go, the faceoff's going to come back to Matthew Crawford. It'll be just to his left. And Collins this time up against Caden Canal. Played back to the point. It's out, and now here comes Malvern. Chasing it down is Aiden Kelly. He gets to it in the corner. That puck played off the boards. Oh, and in on Aranda, and Aranda made a nice save. I don't know how he saw that one. That one got through some people. He was right there for it. He does not allow the rebound. And with just over eight minutes to go in this game, there's another faceoff. This one in St. Joe's end. Over to Doyle. Doyle, it's his little wrister is sent in and deflected. Picked up by St. Joe's and Gareth McDonald tried to get it out of the zone. Melbourne sent it right back in. There's McDonald again. Over to Frankie Ely. Frankie Ely to Winata. Winata shot to save by Crawford. Played in the, oh, and there's no penalty coming on that. That looked like a boarding. O'Neill at the point, just high and wide. Over to the other point where McDonald grabs it, backhands it into the zone deeper. And there's Frankie Ely. O'Neill for St. Joe's Prep stops it in the neutral zone, sends it in. It's picked up by Logan Love. But it's stolen by Collins. Collins takes a wrister, saved and knocked aside by Crawford. In the corner now is Sharafi. And it's now going to be Winata along the near boards. Right in, Sharafi takes a shot, and it's saved by Crawford. Boy, I tell you, Crawford's been stellar. 29 saves today, no goals allowed. And Gargan takes a shot that's blocked down in front. Wow, puck's gonna come all the way back down to Crawford, who has seen 29 shots and turned them all aside. At the other end, Aranda has been very good. He's seen 33 shots. He's gotten to 31 of them. The faceoff is won by Malvern. Tessiero sends it in. Taken there by St. Joe's, played around the boards, but Malvern at the point keeps it in the zone. Lynch now in the far in the near corner. It's played out to Kelly, and Kelly is going to send it all the way down into the corner, the far corner. The referee getting kind of mixed up there in things. Sharafi sends it around the boards to McGinn. McGinn from the point just misses. And it's Gargan looking for Kelly out in front, and there's a penalty coming up. Aranda couldn't quite get off the ice in time, but there is a penalty coming up for boarding on Melbourne. This one's going to Barbicane. Barbicane in the in the box for boarding at 5:45. The fifth penalty of the day on Malvern, but they've killed the first four. And it's now Collins over to Lynch. Lynch wrists one wide, and then went out and tries the near side, and he's wide. O'Neal up to the point to Lynch. Lynch to Winata. To Collins, who couldn't quite get a shot off in time. He finally did. If he had been able to one-time that, he probably would have scored right there. But there's a minute 30 left in the power play. They're going to send it all the way up. It's O'Neal to Winata. Winata with the momentum is going to try 
He can't penetrate. McGinn is knocked down in front. And he tries to keep it in. He does. What an effort by Bobby McGinn. But Melbourne takes it. And now they're in on a breakaway. And the puck slid off his... Oh, the puck slid off his stick. That was Paxton Hoysick who almost had a chance to put this game away. And now Winata comes in, puts on the brakes, tries to get back out in front. And the puck is caught by number 16 and sent it. He throws it into the corner. And now the refs come together. They're going to talk about it. I think the, I think the call here is did he catch the puck and put his hand around it? You can't really catch the puck and put your hand around it and throw it. But if they say he batted it, you can do that. And they're going to give him a penalty for delay of game. And now two people in the box. It's a five on three. This is where St. Joe's Prep has to get back in the game. Kersen and then... That was sent in to Kelly on the half board, but Malvern gains control and sends it all the way down. Aranda sends it up to Sharafi. Sharafi to Tumalti. Tumalti to Gargan. Gargan trying to play it back to Kelly. It's broken up there by Jacobs, and now Jacobs is going to try a one-on-two. Sure-handed. Three-on-five, he's going to try a one-on-two. He gets pushed off the puck. And now here comes St. Joe's looking for a four on two. I mean, normally I'd say it's an odd man rush, but a four on two is not odd man. Kirsten over to Kelly. Kelly over to Gargan. Gargan, I think that was knocked down in front. Kirsten, high slot. And then that one's tipped wide by Sharafi. There's a minute five left in the second pen penalty. That would be the delay a game penalty. Boy, the story of this game for St. Joe's Prep, if they don't come back, it's gonna be wasted opportunities on the power play. And a five on three for over a minute. Winata, back to Lynch. Lynch up to Winata, Winata gains the zone. He's bounced off the puck by, uh, by Skarbinski. McGinn from the point across to Winata, and that is gloved down by Crawford. Crawford makes his 32nd save of the day. There's 35 seconds left in the delay of game penalty to Malvern. Winata against Canal, Caden Canal. That's played into the corner. O'Neill now for St. Joe's, plays it out to Collins. Collins is checked off, tried to play it out. Didn't, Lynch kept the zone for a while, but then it was Aiden Kelly for Malvern Prep who got it out of the zone. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Now McGinn calls forward on the near side. Lynch gives it to him. This is the last of the power play opportunity. That is saved by Crawford. Played across to Lynch. Lynch and that one is deflected in front and it is sent all the way down. It's gonna be an icing as the penalty has expired. There is 2.31 left in this game. We'll keep an eye on Aranda to see when he gets pulled. St. Joe's is Looking to score two goals in the last two minutes of this game. If not, that will be the end of their season. And Malvern will move on to the Flyers Cup 
Triple A final. Kirsten from the point. And kicked aside by Crawford. Now up at the point that stays in momentarily. Skarbinski does get it out of the zone. That's really all he needed to do. And now here is Jeremy Jacobs for Malvern. Plays it to uh, Tessiero. Tessiero's shot is turned aside by Aranda. And a nice centering opportunity broken up by St. Joe's. Here comes Gargan. Gargan's got to get going here. They really need him. He's their leading scorer. He's been quiet all, uh, all evening. And now here comes Jacob down the near side on an empty net. He sends it just wide. 141 left. Arand has been pulled. And here is Tessiero. He shoots and scores into an open net at 135. Malvern now leads three to nothing. That should be all she wrote here in this semifinal. That was Henry Tesoriero for Melbourne into an empty net with 135 to go, and it is three to nothing, Melbourne. Melbourne student section starting to get into it now. They can smell another championship appearance. It would be their third in the last four years. And that puck played out. Collins now plays it back into his own zone to Winata. Winata is going to try to catch the momentum. Come over to blue line to Lynch. Lynch tried to find Winata in the slot. It didn't connect. Collins' shot is knocked down. The pass into the slot is intercepted. And Malvern gets it into the zone for the last minute of the game. One minute remains in this semifinal. The winner is going to get LaSalle prep next week in the Flyers Cup final. And Winata shoots and scores. 51 seconds left. And St. Joe's prep has finally solved Matthew Crawford. Tristan Winata breaks the shutout with 51.4 seconds left. So for Tristan Winata, that is his 11th goal of the season. It is now a 3-1 to hockey game. And a timeout is going to be called by Dave Giacomin from St. Joe's Prep. He's now got to find out a way to get two goals in the next 51 seconds. You are listening, you are watching the Flyers Cup on the Flyers Cup channel. Sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. Hey fans, the Sports Fan Base Network is offering player shoutouts on every Flyers Cup game live stream. Give your favorite player their 15 seconds of fame. Just send $25 via Venmo or Cash App to the SFBN. Then you send an email to the SFBN at gmail.com with the name and team of your player, a high resolution photo, and a one to two line script for the SFBN commentators to read. Once the payment and email is completed, SFBN will reply to confirm receipt and you will see your player shout out at least once per game played. So send out a player shout out for every Flyers Cup broadcast here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Ice Line Arena in Westchester. 45 seconds left in this semifinal between Malvern and St. Joe's Prep. Malvern leads it 3-1. to one. And with 36 seconds left, Aranda for St. Joe's Prep is going to go to the bench for an extra attacker. The faceoff is going to come all the way down into Malvern's zone. St. Joe's needs two goals in these 36 seconds to keep their season alive. And it'll be Winata against Canal. It's won by Winata back to the point. 
McGinn into Winata. Winata taps it to Collins. It's back to the point where McGinn has it. He sends it in on Crawford. Crawford makes the save. There's 21 seconds left, and they're going to send it all the way down for an icing with 17.6 seconds left in this semifinal. As we said, the winner here, which looks like it will be Malvern Prep right now if things stand the way they are. The winner of this game will get LaSalle Prep next week in the Flyers Cup Final. And there's the Pucks one back to the zone. St kept in by McGinn. And that one is out. It was kept in by Lynch. Knocked down in the neutral zone. Lynch pinching for St. Joe's Prep. Collins tries. And now a shot by Winata at the end of the game. And we are going to have some fisticuffs here. Melvin Prep quickly over. And there they go into the student section. Malvern Prep, a big win for them. Sends them to the Flyers Cup final. Malvern three, St. Joe's one. Shots ended up even at 35 each. Matthew Crawford, the star of the game. He made 34 saves for Malvern Prep. Jacob Aranda, just as impressive really for St. Joe's in goal. He made 32 saves. Well, really, yeah, he made 32 saves. One was an empty net goal. He only allowed two goals because one was an empty net goal. Both goalies put on a display here this, uh, this evening. But I really do think it was Matthew Crawford who was the first star of this game. The goalkeeper, the goaltender for uh, Malvern Prep. He was a very much up to the task. And there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a, oh, some more fisticuffs going on. Some more pushing and shoving. And now Matthew Crawford's going to kind of play the, uh, he's going to play the, the role of uh, peacekeeper. Him and Patrick Sweeney give each other a hug. Boy, this was a good game. Malvern Prep three to one. Both games between these four that ended in regulation were both won by Malvern. St. Joe's won a pair of games, one win overtime, one win shootout in the regular season. And your final from Ice Line in Westchester. It is a Malvern three, St. Joe's one. Malvern moves on to the Flyers Cup Championship to be played next week. They will take on LaSalle Prep. I am Jim Zalke signing off from the Flyers Cup semifinal. Good night and God bless. This broadcast is presented by the Flyers Cup and SFBN who own all broadcast rights. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, including social media, is strictly prohibited.